Hey, how's it going? In today's video, we're going to be doing something a little bit different. It's going to be the first of several, I hope to be a you know regular part of this channel. It's just kind of showcasing some of the pieces that I'm working on. It's kind of the other side of my life besides being a songwriter, a session player, a sideman, and doing corporate functions as a guitar player. You know, I get into the gear and, and that's why I do a lot of the demo work and, and have the gear that I do. But the other part of my life that's been a great supplemental income and a passion of mine is working on guitar. So I build and work on different instruments and have always had that as just kind of like a side job, a side hustle and a, a side passion of mine besides playing guitar is working on them. So today we've got my buddy's 1965 LG1. We're gonna be doing the first part um, kind of a full restoration of a big project on this guitar, um, getting it back to full gigging shape. Um, and so I hope you enjoy uh, this different kind of content here in today's vlog. So like I said, here's my buddy's uh, 1965 LG1. What I've done so far um, is take the strings off. Uh, I've already taken the bridge off and the end pin here. Um, so I kind of did some work before I decided I was going to do this vlog, uh, but I'll walk you through how it was when I got it. Um, so one thing that we have to address is there is a missing um, ferrule for this tuning machine, the G-string. Uh, so we need to find replacement for that. Um, the biggest issue was, uh, he said his tuning was not um, stable, and no matter what, when he would capo, it would um, you know throw the intonation way out of whack and, and throw specifically the low E um, way out. And so he was kind of fighting that. Uh, I'm sure the G string was a little unstable without that ferrule, um, and you know I. I knew that this had this plastic Gibson bridge, and we'll talk about that in a second when we take it off. But these are an awful design. Um, I've replaced a handful of these before. They're, they're just not, they don't sound very good. They were manufactured very inexpensively. Um, and they tend to do exactly what this one did, uh, which you can see here, there's like some crumples know if you can see that the glare um, go across the guitar um, but it's crumpled uh, right here and here uh, you see some divot here and it's you know it's just obviously plastic and hollow um, and the reason why there are divots is because this thing is just screwed in um, and so I've already taken this off but I'm kind of put one screw back in there and it's I mean so shoddily done that the screws um, let's see if I can get it to focus here are these uh, hex screws and there's just like a couple washers um, and one of them even appears to have had different washers put on I, I don't know um, you know what work has been done to this guitar he doesn't know what work has been done to this guitar before he got it um, so maybe this bridge was replaced once and and these random washers were put on there by whoever did that but anyways we're gonna keep going here let me check so I don't know if you can see how far that bridge is coming up and of course, you know, it doesn't have screws in it now, so it, it may have been a little lower than that, but it, I mean, you could, you could fit a stack of business cards <laughs> under where this was pulling up. And so obviously the bridge was uh, starting to collapse um, and it was just pulling it more and more. I mean, all the tension of the strings tuned to pitch, but this is what these look like um, here. And so they're just plastic molded and you can see the four screw points and the top like I mean it still has the the finish that's been under here under this bridge and you can see you know just the the dirt and grime that's you know been put into the lacquer here um, the difference in color from under the bridge but we're gonna glue 
this bridge, this is just a, a pre-made. I would make it myself, but um, it's just a lot more cost effective um, to get one that has been CNC'd, um, you know, and it's rosewood. It saves me a lot of time. And so, uh, there, you know, there are some times and, and some circumstances where I would completely shape this. Um, but when it's such a standard bridge, it, it's not really worth my time to, to make it my own. So uh, we've got to shape this. I mean, this is completely flat. Um, so we've got to shape it to fit um, here and we're going to glue it. Um, but this will be the new bridge on there. Uh, the next big thing, uh, we've got to check, um, and I've, I've looked once and I'm unclear about it. So we're going to have to check to see if the bridge plate is cracked. Um, and if it's in fact cracked, then we will have to replace it. By replace it, I mean, we're going to repair it. Um, I know that it is not damaged enough to where we need to remove it from the top and replace the bridge plate. We're going to repair it. So it does not look like the bridge plate needs to be repaired. It's just really chewed up from when they bore these holes for the strings. Uh, or the bridge pins. They just did a really sloppy job and it just marred up and chipped out uh, underneath. But it's actually not cracked, which is really good news. Um, we're not missing enough wood there that I feel like we need to add any, um, but it is pretty marred up and that's why when I felt around under there, I was like, oh, we may have a big split here. Um, but it was just the, the chewed up holes for these six bridge pin holes, but also the holes for the screws that held the and secured the bridge. They, they were really sloppily done. Um, one thing. I do know this guitar has been worked on. It's definitely not, um, you know, virgin in that way uh, by any means. There, there's a Matrix Infinity system here that was that was done, and, and they did a better job than Gibson did in 1965, drilling this hole for the bridge. But not incredible job. It's still pretty chipped out on the bridge plate under here where the uh, piezo pickup goes. So. The next big thing um, that we've got to look at, um, so we know we're going to put the bridge on, we're going to shape that. Um, bridge plate is fine, does not need repairing. Uh, but the other big thing is these frets are so dead. I mean, um, there is no life left in them. It is, the, I mean, the only way that he was not getting substantial fret buzz was because that bridge was coming up and pulling up and uh, the action was just so high <laughs> that it wasn't able to even, you know, have fret buzz. But these, these frets, especially down here, I mean, are just so flat and divoted so much that, that there's no hope for a, you know, a, a, a crown and level um, on these. So we're going to be replacing, doing a total refret on this and, um, you know, I don't have my fret arbor press anymore because I was not doing enough refrets um, to justify it but you know every time I do a refret now I wish I kept it so um, that's kind of where we're at but that's all right um, so we're gonna get this refretted we're gonna get the bridge shaped um, so we're gonna start working on that really rough um, just to get the bulk of the waste here uh, out of the way uh, on this as I shape 
just start the process of shaping this bridge. Always got to remember these old Gibson bridges are like very standard acoustic bridges but flipped upside down. Um, you know, the reverse way that almost every other maker uses these bridges. I'm not using an immense amount of pressure here. Um, obviously don't want to damage the top, but we're just using that radius that it's going to be sitting on. It's definitely going to be unique. Nothing that you can do without using the top of the guitar like this. Um, because this, you know, the radius of this top is going to be um, really uneven uh, just with its age and the amount of tension um, that's changed as the bridge is pulled up. So uh, this is kind of the only process to, to get the shape of the bridge on the, on the bottom side. Here, we're just taking out the bulk in here. to get some music or something. So what I'm doing now is, because I've seen where this is starting to go, I'm going to kind of speed the process along just a little bit and uh, get rid of some of this bulk uh, just by doing some scraping here um, on the bridge to get kind of a, a nice even plane surface. Um, and then we'll go back to sanding definitely to get the final shape here.
So I just realized something, that this bridge, although it is the correct shape, um, the bridge pin holes are not aligned with where they should be. And so uh, I'm gonna quickly test that to see if this is going to sit far back enough to where you can see the line there from the previous bridge uh, it kind of aided the uh, finish there uh, looks like a glue line um, so I'm gonna quickly drill some holes here and see if we're gonna have to either shape a bridge or get the correct bridge here um, and if that's the case then then we'll um, start working on the frets and um, wait on the bridge but before I do any more work to this bridge it's not gonna fit here um, I don't want to shape it to this top and then um, you know not be able to use it so I can still use it um, for a different era uh, of bridge this is a correct era or, I mean this is a correct Gibson bridge here um, and uh, you know we'll be able to use this um, for the era of bridge that this is actually made for uh, not a replacement for this plastic um, mid 60s bridge All I'm doing here is I'm going to use some um, Allen keys here uh, and just put it through those those holes um, in the bridge here. We're going to line it up the ease uh, to see how that lines up. Okay. I think we're going to be all right here. Um, there, there's going to be a slight line, but I bet we can uh, do some finish work there, buff that out, um, and uh, you know get that to be correct um, right there. So I think we're still in good shape um, to where it's going to be. I mean, it's going to be obvious that this bridge had been replaced uh, because the plastic bridge is what's supposed to be on here. So I think we're still going to be all right. Um, and uh, yeah, we're going to move on from here. All right, so I'm gonna pause the video. I'm gonna keep working on this and then uh, we'll, we'll get an update back uh, when this is finished and shaped. Um, and you know, we'll be almost ready um, to be able to uh, glue this thing up and, and get it going. So I've got this bridge uh, pretty much shaped. 
um, it, it still um, needs a little bit of fitting uh, on the edges there's still a little bit of wobble um, and I gotta level it out just a little bit there's some slight front to back uh, wobble there but it is for the most part um, shaped at least the bulk of it uh, what I've decided to do though I'm gonna finish this uh, probably off camera uh, just the fine tuning of that and I'm, I'm gonna work on um, refretting the neck luckily this guitar does not need a neck reset um, but we're gonna refret it um, and you know doing a neck reset uh, would also you know probably double the price uh, of this repair um, and it's you know not totally necessary um, I don't love the the pitch of it um, but it's definitely not in a place to where the neck is coming um, off by any means that joint uh, is is very stable it's not moving at all it's got no evidence uh, of movement um, so unless I absolutely have to do that um, you know I definitely don't like to do a neck reset um, I think it'll play uh, just fine without it and so uh, I'm gonna finish shaping this bridge and then I'm gonna start working on the frets uh, probably on the next uh, vlog episode <laughs> 